Hey guys, Jack Close here. Today I'm going to use or show you guys uh, AI script that I recently created in Unity 3D uh, using JavaScript. Um, it's pretty cool um, AI script. I haven't seen anyone do an AI script like this before. This is actually my second time creating this tutorial. Before that was my first time. Apparently my audio was turned off, so I'm going to have to remake it. So let's just jump in. Uh, there's multiple AI scripts you can create. There's uh, A star. There's some other ray casting ones that you can use. Um, I am doing a simple waypoint based AI. Um, I don't really want to say the way waypoint because it's not really that, but it's it's a door by door um, AI script. So you just put way, uh, waypoints at every single door. I'm um, in the scene. I actually have. Four. I have two. I have one on each side of the room just because um, sometimes the zombie gets stuck in the door so this just enables him to get all the way through the door safely. Um, it's the only downfall but it's just adding one more waypoint and as I can show you later adding waypoints are extremely easy in this script. I will probably make an asset later um, but let's just I'll shut up and I'll just show you how this script works. So if I put player, I'll move this guy in here. Um, I'm not going to show you this beginning of the script that I wrote. Um, it just spawns them. And then, oops, if I actually play the game, it'll just spawn them and get them in the door. It's not that big of a deal. It's a pretty easy script to do it. So as you can see, if he can see you, he's just going to follow you. And if I can actually grab my player, um, and then... If he can't see you, he's just going to go towards doors that are close to you and uh, come after you. So that's the basics of the script. Um, let's I'll show you how it actually works. These are debug rays that you can see right now. And what it's doing is first the zombie is going to check for if he can see the player. And if he can see the player, he's just going to go towards the player. But say the zombie can't see the player next it's going to do is it's going to look at every single door and it's going to check if it can see the door if it can see the door it's going to make that door active and then it's going to get some da data from that door and the data is simply the distance between the zombie and the door and the door uh, added to the door distance of the door to the player um, and then it's going to go towards the closest door it can see that has the lowest number or not the closest door, it's just going to go towards the door with the lowest number that it can see. Um, so pretty simple script. Um, note that the distances aren't as crow flies, it is uh, X and Y distances. Um, it helps out with glitches and stuff like that. Um, just trust me on that one, it just works better. Um, you can do it the other way, but I just prefer not to. So I will open up the script here. Um, first, we're going to ignore activate, jump in, and get to room. These are all just scripts to have the uh, zombie get into the room. So, just spawned is where the actual script is. Everything above this uh, in the update is just getting the door to the room. Note that since I have waypoints with colliders, um, physics collider, ignore collision, just ignores the collision before, between the door and the zombie. Um, allowing him to pass through it but still see it with a raycast. That makes sense. Alright, so first he's going to check for player. He's going to run this function. This function is down here. It's pretty simple. First we're going to record all of his measurements and we're going to make visible equal false. Visible is just a boolean. That's just true or false if you can see it. So we're going to record all the old angles. Next we're going to look at the player. Uh, the player is a variable that we define in the start function by player equals game object dot find player dot transform pretty simple script uh, it's nice if you are spawning things because then you don't have to assign it every time uh, the spawns or whatnot um, next transform dot look at player it's gonna look at that it's gonna make a variable for the hit and then it's gonna do a raycast transform position transform forward is just the direction of the door hit is the variable math infinity and then layer mask layer mask is I have four layers one through eight it looks at 
um, by just simply setting a variable up here, layer mask, one through eight, and then inverting it so I could see everything one through eight and not, or one through seven and not eight through whatever. Um, this is simply because when I spawn zombies, multiple zombies, it's debug rays or it's, it's rays end up hitting them, each other, and then it gets confused and it doesn't know what to do. So that just uh, allows him to send rays through other zombies, which is pretty nice. And then if uh, the hit transform is equal to the player, uh, it's going to send back visible as true. And then, uh, yeah, and then it's just going to return all of the angles back to what it was. Up here, if it is visible, the target is going to equal the player, and it's just going to skip this and then run the move function, which is a simple move function. Uh, it's just going to look at the target and move forward. You guys can modify that. I'm not going to talk about move functions at this time. Say you can't see uh, the player, though. Then it's going to need is it needs to find what waypoint or door it needs to go to. Uh, these two variables, check door zero and door checking false, are going to be used. And then also up here. Uh, doors, this is an array, transform array. Door data, it's uh, the array that's going to hold all of our distances. And door active is a boolean that's saying if I can see the door or not. So those three and then those two down here are the variables we're going to use right now. So we're going to find door. Um, we're just going to get all the angles like before. We're going to make the door active equals false so we can't see it. Then we're going to look at it, or well, you can't see it, but it, the computer thinks so in case you don't actually see it, then it's just going to stay false. It just resets it to false every time. It's going to look at the door, which is the door's check door. Uh, check door is equal to zero at the beginning, so the first number in the array. Then it's going to create a variable that holds the hit, and then it's just going to do, uh, I have a debug ray going on. It's going to hit the shoot the ray out at all the doors. And then if the hit transform equals the door, which is door check door, it's going to make a door data. It's going to equal the door data to the absolute value of the distance between the X distance of the player and the, tar uh, and the zombie, the Zs of the player and the zombie, and then the X and Zs of the door and player. So it's a long line, but it's pretty simple. And then also we're going to set the door active to true, which means we can see this door and it is an option for what door we should actually go to. Then it's going to set all the angles back to what it used to be. Down here it's going to check if it's done checking or not. Number of doors is a variable that we assign in the start function, which equals the lengths of the doors, which is the array, transform array, its length, so how many length that is. We're going to minus that number by 1 because an array check door could equal 0, but really we're checking the size plus 1. Because say we have an array that's 3 big, but really the numbers that are in the array are 0, 1, and 2. So we just got to minus that 1 to get down to the level. You could add this one. You could add 1 to this one, but I decided to do minus 1. Done checking equals true, so it's checked every single door. So it'll skip over this and just stop running the function. But if it's uh, not done checking, it's going to add one to the check door and it's going to run the function again until it is fully complete. Next, as you can see up here, it's going to uh, just reset those two variables because we're going to use those in the pick door again. And if we open pick door, it's going to see if you can see the door. If the door is active on the certain check door, it's going to see if the door data is the smallest or if it's smaller than the current door that it has picked. Um, and then if it is smaller, it's going to set the current door as that door. Pretty simple. And then it's going to do the same thing, done checking thing down here. Um, if it's checked every single door, it's going to do true and end the function. If not, it's going to run the function again until it is done. So that is the basics of it. Then up here, after we've done all that, we're going to set the target as the current door, the, the lowest door. Um, and then we're going to run the move function towards the target. Pretty simple. Um, it's effective. It's an AI script that's only 189 with spaces, so probably 170 lines of code, which is actually really decent. If you have ever seen A star um, scripts or other really complicated ones, it can get pretty bad. Um, I'm going to cut out in about 10 seconds because my recorder only lasts for 10 minutes. But when we, uh, after the cutoff,
I will show you how to set up the scene and actually use this function. All right, so it cut off, but now we are in the scene. Um, this is my prefab for the zombie. It's just called test zombie. Uh, let's just go over the variables. The player, yeah, we don't got to worry about that. We don't got to assign it because it gets uh, the uh, the it gets that in the start function by game object find. Uh, the move speed is just my variable, so I can control the speed of the object. And these are really the three variables that you have to change. All the other ones are normal. Uh, most of these down here are just for the spawning in my window thing that you guys don't have to worry about. Um, doors. So right now I have four doors in the entire scene. So I'm going to put size four and then I'm going to change these to four. And then if this was an actually an object out there, I can't actually add things to this um, because it's a prefab. But the elements are just, uh, you just drag these doors. Door one, door two, door three, door four. I can actually just show you this. I can just uh, put him in the scene and then assign the doors. And then also what I have to do because of my script, um, it's saying it's just spawn and it's going to try to find this waypoint, these waypoints to get into the door, which I don't even want him to do that. So I'm just going to click off just spawn so he's not spawned. And oop, not play button, play. And he's just going to come for me. And I can just come down. Ooh. Collider collision. Um, he does glitch um, in my script. The first door. The first door he finds. For some reason it glitches. I don't know why it does this. But after he does that first mishaps. He doesn't do it anymore. Like I can bring him in this room. So this is exactly where he was. And then I can go back in this room. And now he's perfectly fine with going in this door first. So I don't know exactly why um, it does that. But he does. Um, so this is a pretty easy script that works pretty nicely. Um, there obviously you could find some kinks maybe. But I've yet to find any major ones. And for what I'm going to do, this works perfectly. So there you have it. A basic AI script that is about... 170 lines long well, actually it's less than that because I'm I'm adding my just spawn script in there too so it's actually probably a hundred lines if that um, so I hope you guys like this video uh, comment subscribe like um, if you guys need more in-depth tutorial on this just send me a message or something and I would gladly do that for you. Um, have a nice day.